Right. So, okay, let's just carry on in that vein. Um, <clears throat> right. So, just for just stuff about the order itself, um, Thutmo signed most of his decrees in council with his cartouche, which became the seal of the order, um, in testimony to the great work of our teacher, to be forever a mark of honor and loyalty. Um, it's considered one of the rarest antiquities of Egypt, and it's now in the U.S. Um, the order here is to be congratulated on having its possession one of the oldest, if not the most sacred of all mystic jewels, it says. Um, it goes on about, uh, <clears throat> oh, right here. That the, at the close of his reign in 1447, there were 39 freighters and sorors in the council and the meetings, which become regular and systematic and were held in a hall of the Temple of Karnak, outside of which Thermos III erected two obelisks, bearing a record of his achievements. We're not answering that. Two obelisks. So one of them, it's it may be the obelisk now in Central Park. One of the, oh right, one of the two erected in Egypt by Thutmos III and intended to stay, stand someday in the country where the eagle spreads its wings. Okay, <clears throat> so they believe the Rosicrucian order is descended from Egypt and from essentially Thutmose, the, the started the, the order as an order. And then before his transition, Thutmose III made his son co-regent. Thus, Emotep II took up his father's work in the Brotherhood about the end of September in 1448 B.C. In the month of March 17, 1447 B.C., Thutmose so passed to the great beyond, having been king, Pharaoh, <clears throat> for nearly 54 years, and being but one less a week, less than 89 years of age. His son, Amhotep II, ruled from 1448 to 1420 B.C., and he, in turn, was succeeded by his son, Thutmose IV, who ruled from 1420 to 1411 B.C., Emhotep the third son of the preceding occupied the throne from 1411 to 1375 and was the last of the truly powerful pharaohs or emperors. Upon the transition to Emhotep the third, the empire fell to his son Amhotep the fourth, with whose history all the Rosicrucians are greatly concerned. Emhotep the fourth was born at the royal palace at Thebes, November 24th. 1378. His mother, Tai, or Tia, was of Aryan birth, but both he and his father paid the most sincere respects to her and were proud of her, designating her Queen Tia upon all monuments. Blonde Aryan? Hello? He was crowned only 11 years old in 1367. When he was crowned, he began immediately a career unequaled by any pharaoh. His father, having been the master of the order for several years, built the great temple of Luxor and de dedicated it to the Brotherhood. I'm not going to go into detail. Amotap being the only descendant, as it deemed advisable, that he marry as early as the customs then permit, that an heir to the throne would be assured. But Amotap's children, unfortunately, were daughters, and this proved disastrous to the throne. The life of this great man is too easily found in various histories of Egypt, especially breasteds, breasteds, to warrant space here. But his accomplishments for the order must be considered at least briefly, especially breasted, meaning coronated properly through the, through the, for the female line. That's what that means. Where is the part down where it talks about? Okay, here we go. So truly the religion of Emotep did not endure for long compared to the years of darkness. It was a flash for it ceased to be public and a general religion when Emotep passed beyond the veil in 1350 BC. He too left many monuments, 
mostly symbols of life that are associated with God being the Son. This was in, accord in accordance with the secret doctrines, and it changed the worship of the Son as a God to the worship of the God symboled by, symbolized by the Son. This is the difference in the, in the theology. Right, okay. In the fifth year of his reign, when he was only 16 years of age, a sweeping reform was initiated throughout Egypt by his decree, which prohibited any other form of worship except that already mentioned. In one of his decrees, he wrote, quote, This is my oath of truth, which it is my desire to pronounce, comma, and of which I will not say, colon, quote, it is, my, it is false, unquote, eternally forever changed, eternally forever. Okay, sorry, again. This sounds very odd. It is my oath of truth, which it is my desire to pronounce, but of which I will not say, and of, and of which I will not say, it is false eternally forever. Unquote. It sounds like he's saying, it sounds like he's saying, that of, of that which I will not say, and then he's saying, it is false, eternally, forever. <sighs> Very odd way of speaking. He then changed his own name so that it would be not, not be con inconsistent with his reform. Emotep meant Ammon is satisfied. Thus he altered it to Akhenaten, or Ilkhenaten, meaning pious to Aton, or glory to Aton. He built a new capital at, at El Arnaria, Amarna, in the plain of Hermopolis, on a virgin site at the edge of the desert and abandoned Thebes because it was the magnificent city of Ammon. At El Amarna, he also built a large temple for the brotherhood in the form of a cross and a large number of houses for his council. Here was the beginning of monastic life, for within the boundaries of El Amarna, Arna lived 229 freighters of the order, each having taken an oath never to, quote, pass beyond the shadow of the temple, unquote. These freighters were special costumes in which included a cord at the loin and covered for the head, while the priests at the temple wore a surplus of, surplus of linen and had his head shaved in a round spot on the top. It is from this institution that all monastic orders, especially those of St. Francis, derive their methods, even their costumes. And Akhenaten, or who is also Amotep IV, not only built this, his temple in the form of a cross, but he added the cross and the rose as symbols and further adopted the crux and, and sata. The crux and sata is one of the earliest forms of a cross. It is an oval resting on a tau cross or letter T. It was the sim it was a symbol of life. And um, So my my take on this is that a lot of this stuff is reenactment of previous beings. Um, the one God all happened at the same time. It was meant to happen. Uh, this is this was part of the part of that work. But what I keep also coming back to is the, these words Illuminati, Illuminatium. Um, <clears throat> their order, uh, their Council of International. A manifesto carries the word SOV as in sovereign, but they never actually say the word sovereign. There's a bunch of uh, names written on it. Um, and what I'm really getting at here is that it seems to me that when something is, is initiated coming down from somebody that feels like angels or beings were lifting him up, um, you have to realize that that there's always going to be a dark a dark group that will take the same name 
and pretend to do acts in, in the name of the, that order, the previous one. It looks to me that uh, a lot of this stuff, uh, the, the Knights Templar stuff and the Rosicrucian stuff, and Knights of Malta stuff, all that, all stems from pretty much the same line of peoples, of soul lines, soul families, really. Um, and but this whole thing about the twelve, with the uh, with the order of the Rosicrucian order, is very interesting to me. And I can assume that there would be some similarities to the one in which we, uh, the Dark Twelve, which we have been aware of. So anyway, um, this is part of my thesis. So I hope you enjoyed my my study with you. Okay, bye bye.